Beelzebub's Tale to His Grandson Chapter 44 In the opinion of Beelzebub, man's understanding of justice is for him, in the objective sense, an accursed mirage. Smiling and continuing to look affectionately at his grandson Hussein, Beelzebub said, "'His only now, my dear future substitute, after all that I've related to you and all that you have in a general way taken in during this time concerning the three-brained beings breeding on the planet Earth, that I find it opportune to tell you about that terrestrial question to which I promised to devote myself at the very end of all my tales, namely about that maleficent idea widespread among all of them, which you remember when I spoke about the chief kink in their psyche and that is about their diverse and peculiar Havat Vernonis, or as they themselves call them, religions. I said was made by them the basis of all these religions of theirs and which maleficent idea was called good and evil. I then also told you that on account of this maleficent idea existing among the terrestrial three-brained beings, great events, or as I would express it in the words of your favourites, turmoils, recently occurred on the holy planet Purgatory, and the involuntary cause of their arisings for certain members of your Hernas Gensa, or according to the expression of your favourites, your genealogical tree. In order that you should the better picture to yourself and more easily assimilate all that I intend to explain to you, it's in my opinion necessary first of all to say something about certain of these long past events which at first glance have nothing in common with this idea. And so, I've already t once told you that when I descended for the fifth time onto the surface of this planet of yours, I remained on it a short time and soon returned home to Mars. This happened then because my friends notified me from the centre that in the near future there would appear on the planet Mars one of the cherubim near to our all-embracing endlessness, who had some command or other concerning me. And my arrival on the planet Mars, after my arrival on the planet Mars, the said cherub did indeed soon make his appearance, and the command given him from above concerning me was this, that owing to my conscious labours for the attainment of results for the purpose of, co of common cosmic welfare, that is to say, owing to the fact that I had attained on your planet the abolition of the practice of sacrificial offerings among the three brain beings who have taken your fancy, and also owing to the personal petition of his conformity to the angel Lewisos before our common father endlessness, my punishment for my personal transgression was reduced in this respect, that thenceforward it should no longer affect my posterity. So it was just from then on that my children, that is your father and your uncle Tuilan, could already, whenever they wished, at their own desire, return to the centre, and there discharge their appropriate obligations to the innumerable actualizations of our universal father. After this great event for our family, my children indeed soon left the planet Mars and returned to the centre, where on their arrival, being already great sages in certain spheres of objective knowledge, and good actualizers of its laws in practical application, they were soon appointed to appropriate responsible duties. Your father, as I've already told you, was immediately assigned to the post of Zerlikna, on one of the parts of the surface of our dear Caratus, in which post he gradually became worthy of obtaining the responsibility of Chief Zerlikna over all the three brain beings breeding on our planet, which post he still retains and your uncle Tuilan, as I have also already told you, was then enrolled as one of the assistants to the director of the Etherogram station on the Holy Planet Purgatory, which, then as now, has an Etherogram connection with almost all the planets of our great universe. Later, he also merited the post of Chief Director, and this post he still retains at the present time. I must explain to you, my boy, also why on their arrival there at the centre, my results, or, according to the expression of your favourites, my sons, then became worthy immediately to obtain these responsible posts. 
In order that this should become comprehensible to you, I must tell you that among those exiled with me, at the very beginning of our exile there, was the chief Zelikna of our planet Caratus, the then still young but already very learned Pulagistus, who, after the all-gracious pardon, became worthy to be and still is an assistant to the great observer of the movements of all the concentrations of the megalocosmos, his self-keepness, the arch-seraph Kisheltana. And so, when I began there on the planet Mars to organise my observatory, this same learned Pulogistus proposed to me that I should take him in the capacity of inspector and manager of this new establishment of mine. Of course, I then immediately agreed with his proposal, as he was a very great authority on locating all large and small concentrations, as well as an authority on the laws of their reciprocal maintenance, and from then on, this great learned Pulugistius began to exist in my house on the planet Mars. Later, when the results of my active principle arose and were formed to corresponding age, I once asked this learned Pulugistius to undertake the duty of Oskiar Notzna, or as your favourites would say, educator, of my children. And to this proposal of mine he agreed with great readiness because existing there under unusual conditions, he had no possibility of using his multifarious learning to his satisfaction, and thanks to this proposal of mine, what is called a wide field of activity was opened up for him in this respect. From then on, apart from the execution of his strict duties, which at the beginning were not too much for him, he began to devote himself entirely to the creation of corresponding outer and inner conditions, so that my sons should take in impressions for the purpose of crystallising in themselves the requisite being data for a responsible existence worthy of three-brained beings. My sons soon became so attached to him that they never left his side even during the execution of his strict duties concerning my observatory, and even under these conditions the good Pulogistius constantly enlightened their reason and gave them practical explanations about all the observations on the concentrations, the methods of studying their mutual influence and the significance of these influences themselves. He always explained to them why and for what purpose any definite cosmic concentration occupies just a certain place and informed them about the particularities of the influence of these concentrations on each other during the common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process. In this way, under the guidance of this remarkable learned being, there was not only crystallised in the common presences of my results, data required for every kind of responsible three-brained being, but also numerous data for the thorough cognizance, cognizance and the sensing of true information about cosmic concentrations and their functions. By this way, it was just at this period that their subjectively favourite subjects for observation and study were gradually formed in each of my sons. Namely, your father liked to observe and study the mutual influence and maintenance of cosmic concentrations situated in the spheres nearest to the prime source, the most most holy sun absolute, and your uncle Tuilin manifested an interest in the observations on the planet Earth and in the process which proceeded on it of the being existence of the three brain beings who've interested you. When I happened to be occupied with something else, I often commissioned him to keep note of all the changes which proceeded there. When my sons were prepared to leave the planet Mars forever, your uncle Tuilin begged me to keep him periodically informed of my observations of the earth beings, which I of course promised to do, and they flew away from there to the centre nearer to our Lord. When they arrived there, and it proved that they were well informed concerning the position of cosmic concentrations and their properties and particularities, and also that they were practically versed in the calculations of the totality of the reciprocal influences, then thanks to all this they were immediately assigned to the said responsible duties. And so when I learned of the permanent place of their existence, and to which posts they were found worthy, 
I, from then on, according to my promise, sent every quarter of our year to Tuilan an exact copy of all my written summaries of those observations which I continued to make. Rather many years passed since the time I began to send Tuilan these etherograms, and I personally did not know what became of them, until I received information about these same turbulent events on the planet Purgatory. It transpired that the great governor of the holy planet Purgatory, his all-quarters maintainer, the arch-cherub Helk Gamatios, having once by chance learned that one of his assistants of the governor of the etherogram station, Tuilan, periodically received from the solar system ores very long etherograms from his father, evinced a desire to become acquainted with their contents, and having become acquainted with them, he not only became interested in them himself, but even commanded your uncle Tuilan always to reproduce the contents of these etherograms in the common planetary Tuluk Tazinkek, so that some of the higher being bodies dwelling on the holy planet might, if they wished for a rest, be informed of the psyche of those peculiar three-brained beings breeding in one of the very remote corners of the megalocosmos. The Tuluk Terzinek is similar, of course, to a certain degree to that which on Earth is called a radiogram. Your uncle Tuilan afterwards always did so. Whenever he received etherograms from me, he always reproduced their contents in the common planetary Tuluk Terzinek, and in all this way, all those righteous souls dwelling on the holy planet were kept informed of all my observations and investigations of everything concerning their strange psyches. From then on, certain of the righteous higher being bodies there, on the holy planet, not only began to follow all my observations very attentively, but they also began to ponder on the strangeness of their psyche. <clears throat> The results of the pondering of the blissful higher being bodies was that they began to understand that something was wrong with the psyche of the three-brained beings of that planet Earth, and they even discerned something suspicious in the cause of this something wrong, and ultimately many of them began to be seriously indignant at what first seemed to them an injustice coming, as it were, from above. The more these indignant righteous souls shared their impressions with others, the greater their number gradually increased, so that everywhere in the Zaruris, a Zaruri on the holy planet correspond approximately to what on the planet Earth are called towns and villages, on the holy planet they thought and deliberated among themselves only about this. The result of it all was that all of the inhabitants of the holy planet chose fifty righteous souls from among their number to investigate jointly and to find out the true reason why such an absurdity exists in the psyche of the three-brained beings of that planet Earth, which makes the self-perfecting impossible for that higher being part, which for various reasons sometimes arises also in certain of them. These chosen fifty religious souls were just those who were already worthy to be candidates for going to the most most holy source of everything existing. Then even his all-quarters maintainer, the arch-cherub Helk Gamatios, the governor of the holy planet, not only sanctioned the choice of these fifty blissful souls, but also, by his own all-gracious decision, expressed a desire to help them in every way in the fulfilment of their undertaking. And so, my boy, when these fifty candidates for the Sun Absolute began their investigations, then after long and complicated researches, it became clear to them that the fundamental cause of the whole abnormality of the psyche of the three brain beings arising on this planet was that a very definite notion arose and began to exist, that outside the essence of beings, as it were, there are two diametrically opposite factors, the sources of good, the sources of evil, which are just the instigators for all their good and bad manifestations. It was then established by them that this universally disseminated maleficent idea, the data for which gradually became crystallised in each of them during their formation into preparatory age, already dominates their common psyche at their responsible existence, and becomes on the one hand a tranquilizer and justifier of all their manifestations, and on the other hand the fundamental impeding factor 
for the possibility which arises in certain of them for the self-perfecting of the higher being parts. When the righteous dwellers on the holy planet had made all this clear to themselves, they began to consider and deliberate among themselves how to find a way out of the situation and what they could do from their side. It was related to me they began to arrange meeting and meetings and conferences everywhere in Saruris to try to, by collective effort to arrive at some decision and after long deliberations and complicated what are called ballots by the righteous souls of single Zaruris as well as by different Zaruris the following resolution, resolution was ultimately also unanimously carried first of all to lay a petition at the feet of our maker creator that he in his providence should send to the three brain beings of the planet Earth a messenger from above, with data corresponding to such a reason as could on the spot find a possibility of uprooting this maleficent idea, and secondly, in view of the fact that the actualization on the surface of this planet of such a maleficent idea was, and until now is, the fundamental cause of all the terrifying misfortune for the sacred higher being parts arising there, to venture with contrition to request our common father not to allow the higher being part of that terrestrial sweet brain being who was the cause of the arising there of the maleficent idea to be taken on the holy planet even if this higher being body is perfected to the required gradation of sacred reason but to doom it to exist eternally on the planet remorse of conscience Well, it was just then, my boy, after the dwellers of the holy planet had sanctioned this resolution, that as I expressed it, that turmoil broke out there, which even until now, not one of the sacred individuals who knew this epic story can recall without, so to say, shuddering. This turmoil was evoked there in the following way. After the said resolution was carried out, it was soon undertaken on the initiative of all those 50 chosen candidates for the Sun Absolute to elucidate just which terrestrial three-brained being, with perhaps his higher being part already formed in him, was the cause of the arising on this planet of yours of such a maleficent idea. And according to this elucidation, it turned out that three-brained being, who was the first to give the beginning of the crystallising of that maleficent idea, was a certain Macri Kornbergzoin, whose higher being part perfected the required gradation of reason, had not only become worthy to go to the holy planet, but was even already considered one of the first candidates to be taken on to the most most holy sun absolute. As was afterwards related to me, when this became known a groan, so to say, hovered over the whole of the holy planet, and there was not a single righteous soul there who could not think without remorse about this terrible fact. For almost a quarter of a, of a year, they only judged back and forth about this unprecedented turmoil, and at each Zeruri, commissions and sub-commissions of every kind again set to work to resolve such an extraordinary situation as had arisen. The result of it all, was that the following resolution again on the same basis was this time passed. To leave in abeyance the first common planetary sentence which was passed concerning the higher part of Macri Kron Bern Cousin, and to lay at the feet of his almost gracious endlessness the request of all the dwellers of the holy planet to mitigate this terrifying sentence and therefore, at the next appearance on the holy planet of our almost gracious creator endlessness, this request was laid at his feet. Our almost gracious creator then, as it is said, only thought a little and then consented to command that this deserving soul should continue to exist on the holy planet until the future results of his evil deed should be revealed. In spite of the fact that this completely formed higher being part was the fundamental cause of the impossibility for all the higher being bodies which arise in the presences of certain three-brained beings of this planet to perfect themselves completely, this gracious command was given by our common father evidently because he hoped that ultimately these three-brained beings themselves 
might perhaps cognize their errors and begin to exist as is becoming to three-centred beings to exist. And in that case, there would be no need to punish so terribly the higher part of that being who, without yielding to adverse conditions not depending on himself, and much stronger than his possibilities, and mercilessly struggling with his own inevitable denying principle, was able to perfect himself to such a gradation, thanks to which he had acquired the possibility of reaching the threshold of the basis of everything existing in the universe. Owing to the said command of our almost gracious creator, the higher part of this poor Macri Kronbergsoin now still exists on the holy planet and his future now depends exclusively only on the three brain beings who've taken your fancy. After rather a long pause, Beelzebub continued thus, The information concerning these events proceeding on the holy planet first reached me during my sixth personal descent on the surface of your planet, and I, of course, having become very interested in it all, began on my part also to investigate in detail on the spot this distressing story connected with the three brain beings who've taken your fancy. First of all, my boy, I consider it necessary to tell you sincerely, just to you, my direct substitute, that although all the righteous dwellers on the holy planet, with the help of various and at the same time very elaborate means, made it clear that the fundamental cause of all the abnormalities of the psyche of these three brain beings you've taken your fancy was, and until now still is, only this maleficent idea. Yet nevertheless, I cannot myself confirm this categorically. Of course, it cannot be denied that this fantastic idea played a big part in respect of the gradual, so to say, dilution of the psyche of these unfortunates. Many impressions were taken in me and data, data crystallised for a subjective opinion when having become interested in this story, I began, among other things, to make my researches and to make clear to myself also the story of the arising and formation of this same Macri Kronbernzoin. It was just these same special investigations of mine which clearly showed me that although he indeed first used the words good and evil, Yet he was not to blame that these words later acquired there in the process of the existence of the beings of all subsequent generations such a maleficent sense for your favourites. If, my boy, I now initiate you into the information I learned concerning the history of the arising and process of the existence there of this Macri Kronbertzoin, then perhaps corresponding data would be crystallised in you for an approximate representation concerning this terrestrial fact. I shall begin by saying that when I decided to occupy myself there with this, I then began from that time on, whenever I met any corresponding individual, to inquire about everything which in totality might throw some light on one or another aspect of the individuality of this Macri Kronbertzoin. You will probably be interested to learn that among the first individuals I met who could give me some information about what I've said, a very aged being of our tribe turned out to be very useful. In conversation, he cleared up many things for me and indicated to me several very good sources from which I later drew very useful and detailed information. This elderly being about whom I now speak was none other than the uncle of that young being of our tribe on whose account I had to descend to this planet of yours the first time and who afterwards became the chief over all the beings of our tribe who were exiled to that system ours. This mentioned elderly being of your planet existed just on the continent Atlantis, and just at that period when that Macri Kronbertzoin existed there also. According to all the information I learned, and also according to every other special method of my investigation, it transpired that this terrestrial three-brained being named Macri Kronbertzoin arose and began to exist there on the continent Atlantis from this sacred process of El Muano, which proceeded between two terrestrial beings there of different sex who had just reached responsible age, owing to the fact that this couple had a healthy heredity in every aspect and that the general external conditions of ordinary being existence 
there were still relatively normal and for this couple happened to be specially favourable. Hence the result of this sacred process, that is to say this same according to them son of theirs, who was later called Macri Kwan Bertzoin, already received in his presence from the beginning of his arising and during his early existence almost the same data for the being of a future responsible being as every Kishap Martinian three-brained being should possess at his arising anywhere on any other planet of our great Megala cosmos. And as a desire happened to arise in his producers, or as it is said there in his parents, to prepare their result to become a responsible being with a scientific career, and as they also happened to find successful guides for him, then when this result of theirs became a responsible being, he became a very good scientist, of course very good for the planet Earth. He soon became worthy on account of his scientific merits even to become a full member of the learned society at Cowden. During the process of his responsible existence in the scientific field, he once more clearly saw the real value of his own significance and sincerely realised his nullity. His nullity. From then on, he began with a sore grief to meditate seriously on these realisations of his, and the result of his meditations was just this, that in every part of his entire presence, the hope gradually began to arise and ultimately even the conviction became definitely fixed that conscious labours and intentional sufferings might transform him from a nothing into a something. And then he began to labour consciously with a complete mercilessness towards his denying part and to create intentionally disturbing conditions for this denying part of his. Moreover, he began to actualise these conscious labours of his and intentionally created conditions of his exclusively only in the manifestations and perceptions in the sphere of those duties of a responsible being which he had taken upon himself that is to say, in the matter of scientific investigations. It was just during that period of his existence that he understood certain cosmic truths. And in consequence of the fact that data for the engendering of the being impulse called love of a kind was still crystallised in him as in most of the three brain beings of that period, then in order that other beings of his planet around him, similar to him, should also know about these truths, which he had learned, he created out of marble a bull Moshano, under the title of The Affirming and Denying Influences on Man. A bull Moshano on the continent Atlantis was what the contemporary beings there have replaced by what are called books. An exact copy of the mentioned bull Moshano made from the tusks of what are called Chiriniano I happened to see personally later, namely at my sixth descent there, and to decipher it rather in detail. As the information I learned concerning the question in what way the said copy of the Bulmashano incised with his own hand by Macri Quantbertzoin, and which I happened to decipher during my last sojourn on your planet, remained intact and reached to the contemporary epoch, will be very instructive and interesting to you. I will briefly tell you about it. When the original of that bull Moshano was created and sincerely admired and approved by the other learned members of the Society at Cowden, it was placed in the middle of the central what is called cathedral of the beings belonging to that society. In consequence of the fact that the contents of the said bull Moshano then began to interest a greater and greater number of the beings of that period, then the leaders of the mentioned society decided to make several copies of it in order to place them in the same way in all the branches of the church in other cities of that same continent Atlantis as well as on other continents. Seven very exact copies were made of it just for this purpose from the said tusks of the Tuniano. One of these mentioned copies as, as my what is called Psychonulian investigations cleared up for me was then assigned to that branch of the church which was situated on the small continent then existing named Sindraga which lay not far from the still existing continent Africa. During the second Transapalnian perturbation to that ill-fated planet this small continent Sindraga 
also just like the continent Atlantis, ended with all that was on it within the planet. And as regards the continent Grabonsi, or as it is now called Africa, you must notice that although this continent did not then enter wholly within the planet, yet nevertheless the same happened to it as happened to other still existing continents, as for instance to the continent Asia, namely certain parts of it entered within, and in their place, from beneath the water others arose, which having become joined to its remaining parts, became formed as it is now at the present time. When, as it seems, the said copy was brought to the continent Grabonsi, in order from there to send it further than just at that time, that second great catastrophe befell to this ill-fated planet, and owing to the fact that this part of the surface of the continent Grabonsi on which the copy was found happened to remain intact, this copy did not enter within the planet. After this terrifying event, this production of the pending Saint Macri Quant Bertzoin lay for a long time beneath the ruins and was gradually covered with Kashiman. And only after about 30 centuries when the three brain beings who've taken your fancy again multiplied and their process of reciprocal destruction proceeded near this place between the communities of that time named Phil Nuancy and Plitza Zuali, the beings belonging to the community of Phil Nuzani, Phil Nuzani then digging holes to obtain drinking water for themselves and their camels, came across this copy and dug it out. And when soon after that, the beings concluded to both of the mentioned communities, start that again, and when soon after that, the beings belonging to both of the mentioned communities concluded among themselves, as it has already become usual there, what they call a friendly peace, and began to divide everything acquired during this process of theirs, my various means which have also already become usual there, and which they express as conquest, pillage, commandeering, indemnities, and so on, then this discovery also, which, according to the understanding of the beings of the earth of that period, was valued only as rare material, was divided into halves, and the beings of each separate community took for themselves one half of this said great creation. One of the halves of this copy, passing for various reasons from group to group, to another finally fell after seven centuries into the hands of what are called the Egyptian high priests. That strange and peculiar combination of several tusks, already incomprehensible to them, became a sacred relic, and in this character it existed there until the period when that Persian king, about whom I once already told you, went there with his hordes, and made, as is said there, a clean sweep of that same unfortunate Egypt. Further, that same half of the copy of the Bull Marciano happened to get this time to the continent of Asia, and again passing from hand to hand, passed in the middle of my sixth descent there by inheritance from his grandfather, just to that Asaurian priest by whom I saw it for the first time. As for the second half of that unprecedented work which cannot be made again there, passing also from hand to hand owing to reasons of every kind, it finally also happened to get into one of the central communities of Asia, and during one of what they call earthquakes, it entered within the planet, though not very deep beneath its surface. Here I must tell you, by the way, also how, during that sixth descent of mine, I learned about all the aforesaid events, as well as about, in general, certain other similar information which had happened long before. I've already told you that during that sixth descent of mine, I became a professional, namely a physician hypnotist, and that I studied the strange psyche of your favourites with the help, among other things, of hypnotism. Also, that is, through the special specific inherency acquired in their psyche. During the period of these activities of mine, among them, I specially prepared some of them in a certain way and made from these subjects what they themselves in former epochs called pythias and what contemporary beings call mediums. Into pythias or mediums, those three brain beings are converted there in whom, either spontaneously, only owing to accidentally arranged surrounding conditions, 
or intentionally on the part of another consciousness, the inner functioning of the planetary body gets well accustomed to every change of the inner general psyche during sudden changes of their blood circulation, in consequence of which in such subjects there is not hindered the free functioning of various peculiarities of the general psyche which are consciously or unconsciously directed from outside and of the chief automatic data still present in them for genuine being consciousness, which totality of functioning proceeded in them they call subconsciousness. In this same subconsciousness of theirs, owing to many causes formed in them, that particularity of the common psyche of the three brained beings also accidentally survived, which in general might function under certain conditions, and which is called the seeing and sensing of what has occurred in the remote past. And so, my boy, when during that sixth descent of mine I learned about the beginning of that sad common cosmic history which came about there on your planet, and when I began to investigate it on the spot during my sojourn there, and also began to make clear to myself the individuality of this Macri Quantbertzoin then, because a very long time had already elapsed since that event, and even every Causa Nunanian trace concerning the being who was to blame for it all had absolutely vanished there, I decided to have recourse, in addition to the ordinary forms of investigation, also to this Spipsycunalian means. And this Spipsycunalian means of mine, I had recourse also to what is called mediumism. That is to say, I had recourse to the mentioned special property of the said mediums speci specially prepared by me. When during my investigations concerning the actions and personality of this Macquarie Quambertzoin, it seemed probable that there still existed on the surface of that planet something which had a close connection with him. I just began to look for that something also in the said manner, having learned in this way that the aforesaid Asaurian priest possessed the half I referred to of the copy of the original Bumashano created personally by Macri Quanbazoin, and likewise having learned that the same Asaurian Iso Isaurian priest existed on the continent Asia in the locality called Ermia. I went there, and having found him, soon made it clear that indeed he had a very ancient and, as he expressed it, shapeless large ivory mass, which he himself considered very antique and valuable. Although after brief negotiations he agreed to show it to me, yet he did not wish to sell it for any money at all. Nevertheless, as a result of my talks and persuasions of several days, he allowed me to make an alabaster copy of it, which I took away with me. As for the second half, although owing to the same method of searching I soon found out where it was, yet it cost very much trouble and bother to obtain it for the immediate deciphering of its contents. Although I said that the second half had not yet had time during that period to enter deeply into that planet, Yet, nevertheless, it did enter so deep that it was impossible to obtain it by ordinary methods. But my chief trouble was caused then by this, that the place where it existed was near a centre populated by your favourites, and I had to prepare everything in advance and to take all suitable measures in order that none of them should either learn nor even suspect anything about it at all. Among the measures I took, for instance, was even the purchase of parts of the outskirts of the given place from various large and small proprietors, and I had it dug by workmen exclusively of foreign origin, under the guise of preparing a shaft for what are called copper mines. And so, my boy, after I had found both of these halves of the copy of the creation of the pending St. Macri Quantbazoin by the aforesaid means, and took them to the city of the country now called Turkestan, in which at that period I had the chief place of my existence, I began to decipher the inscriptions and incisions on the Bumashano of the scientific thesis by Macri, Konbergsoin, under the title of The Affirming and Denying Influences on Man. When we return home, I shall without fail try to recall and tell you as nearly as possible word for word the whole contents of this great reproduction of the reason, of this great production of the reason, and is said of the hand of a three-brained being, 
But meanwhile, I will expound to you only that part of it in which Macquarie Cronbertzoin first employed the notion of good and evil, signifying by these words those forces which are just the basis for the formation of the presence as well as of the flowing state of every separate relatively independent cosmic arising, and also, of course, of every being. If the notions recorded on this boom Moshano were put into ordinary language, they could be stated in the following words. Evidently, we men, also like all the existing units of the world, are formed and always consist of the same three independent forces, by means of which the process of reciprocal maintenance of everything existing proceeds, namely, of the following three independent world forces. The first of these forces constantly arises from the causes which proceed in the prime source itself, and from the pressure of the newly arisen, and issuing from it by momentum, flows out of that prime source. The second world force is what this first force becomes, when, after having spent the momentum which it has received, it strives to re-blend with the source of its arising, according to the fundamental world law, called the effects of a cause must always re-enter the cause. Both of these forces in the general process of reciprocal maintaining forces are entirely independent, and in their manifestations have always and in everything their own properties and particularities. The first of these two fundamental forces, namely that one which, for compelling reasons, must always manifest outside the source of its arising, must constantly involve... I'll start that again. The first of these two fundamental forces, namely that one which, for compelling reasons, always manifests outside the source of its arising, must constantly involve. And the second one, on the contrary, striving to blend with the cause of its arising, must always, and in everything, evolve. Owing to the fact that the first of the mentioned three independent forces arises from vivifying actions, proceeding in the very foundation of the cause of everything existing, and thus receives in its presence the germ of the possibility of manifesting vivifyingness, it may be considered as good, that is, as a factor for the actualizing of the backward-flowing effects which in relation to this first force can and must be considered as evil. Moreover, the first of these forces, which is manifested from inevitable and compelling causes arising in the prime source itself, can from this point of view be considered as passive. And the second backward flowing force, because it must con constantly resist in order to have the possibility of penetrating backward, or at least the possibility of withstanding the opposite flowing first passive force, which has received its momentum from the prime source causes, must be regarded as active. And as for the third independent world force, this force is nothing else but only the result of the clash everywhere and in everything of these two fundamental descending and ascending independent forces. Although this third independent force is only the result of both first fundamental forces, it is nevertheless the spiritualizing and reconciling source of every world formation. And it is the spiritualizing source of every world formation because it arises and must exist in them as a presence all the time, while the given results exist which arise from various unusual mutual resistances occurring between the said two fundamental forces flowing in entirely opposite directions. And so, my boy, it was in this sense and in this meaning that the words good and evil were first used by this unfortunate Macri Quantberzoin. Thanks to the aforesaid Bulmashano of his, and according to other data elucidated by me there on the spot, there was crystallised in me, both concerning Macri Quantberzoin himself and everything else, my own special opinion entirely different from the one which the righteous dwellers of the holy planet expressed as a result of all their researches, which, although wise, were not direct. I repeat, 
Although the idea of external good and evil first arose there thanks to the individuality of that Macri Quantbertzoin, yet he was, in my opinion, not to blame for it, having taken such a maleficent form. However it might have been, my boy, indeed according to the detailed and impartial researches I made there on the spot concerning all this, the following then became very definitely clear to me. When this maleficent idea there gradually took on such a definite form, and began to be for the psyche of your favourites what is called an actualizing factor, for the crystallization in their common presences of data for the fantastic notion, namely that outside of them there exist, as it were, objective sources of good and evil acting upon their essence. From then, from that time on, other peculiar data, at first spontaneously, and later through strange consciousness, began to be crystallised in their general psyche of each of them, which data, owing to the automatic being associations, engendered the conviction that the causes of all their manifestations, both good and bad, are not they themselves, personally, nor their own criminal essence egoism, but some or other external foreign influence, not depending on them at all. The fundamental evil for all these unfortunates from this fantastic idea resulted there chiefly because, even before this, of course, thanks always to the same conditions of ordinary being existence established by them themselves, data ceased to be crystallised in them for the engendering of what is called various being aspects of a worldview, and instead of this a worldview is formed in them based exclusively on that maleficent idea about external good and evil. And indeed, at the present time there, your favourites have already based all questions without exception, questions concerning ordinary being existence, as well as questions about self-perfecting, and also about various philosophies and every kind of science existing there, and of course also about their innumerable religious teachings, and even their notorious what are called morality, politics, laws, morals, and so on, exclusively on the fantastic, but for themselves, in an objective sense, very maleficent idea. If now, my boy, in addition to all I've told you concerning this maleficent idea, I shall tell you only about how the beings of our tribe who were exiled on this peculiar planet involuntarily became the participants of the arising of a certain comical story, then I'm sure you'll obtain almost a real conception of the weird notion of your favourites about good and evil. The beings of our tribe were in the following way the involuntary cause of the complete fixing of this comical story in the process of the ordinary existence of these strange three-brained beings. I've already told you once that many beings of our tribe happened in the beginning to exist there and to mix with the ancestors of these favourites of yours and even to have friendly relations with certain of them. It's necessary to remark that when our tribe indeed existed there among them, there was absolutely nothing at all concerning this tragicomic story about which I shall now tell you, unless we exclude the fact that before our tribe left that planet, the last time a notion arose and began to exist among certain beings there, but only among those particularly naive, that the beings of our tribe are, as it were, immortal. And this notion then arose there, evidently, because the beings of our tribe had an incommensurably longer duration of existence than theirs, and hence the cases of the sacred Rascuano among our tribes were rare, and perhaps it happened that in those periods this sacred process did not even occur to any of our tribe. I repeat that besides the aforesaid, there was nothing else there at that period when our tribe existed among them. Only afterwards, when, for certain considerations, the desire was expressed from above that as few as possible of the beings of our tribe should exist on that planet, and when, therefore, the majority of us emigrated to exist on other planets of this same system, in consequence of which, scarcely any of our beings remained among them, just from that time on began that aforementioned comical story in which even now, until now, the real names of certain beings of our tribe are involuntarily involved. The events which gave rise there to this peculiar co coincidence 
namely that these strange three-brained beings connected the names of many tribes of our be tribe connected the names of many beings of our tribe with this fantastic idea of theirs came about owing to the following soon after our beings departed from this planet a certain armanatura who had belonged to the epoch of the blossoming of the tikliamishian civilization and who was by profession a priest but from among those of this profession whom others regarded as learned priests was the first who built up a whole religious teaching based on this maleficent idea it was just in that same religious teaching that he among other things explained for the first time that certain invisible spirits existing among them spread external good and evil and compelled men to take in and manifest this good and evil and that these spirits the spreaders of good were called angels and these those spirits the spreaders of evil were called devils the angels the bearers and spreaders of good that is of the most high and most divine being themselves high and divine could never be seen or sensed by men but as regards the devils they having the lowest origin that is to say coming from below itself can on the contrary be seen by men and if sometimes men do not actually see devils then this is only because of their suggestion and hence the visibility of devils for the perception of human sight increases in proportion to the increase of the righteousness of people <laughs> when this new religious teaching was widely spread certain of them according to the tales of your ancestors had information about the existence in former times among them of those beings who as it were were immortal and who suddenly disappeared and it was just these beings who decided to spread the supposition that evidently they were just these same devils who foreseeing the arising of a true religious teaching and fearing that people in consequence would perhaps find them out made themselves invisible but continued in reality to exist among them it was then that the real names of many beings of our tribe which also chanced to reach in the said manner to the beings of the period when this mentioned religious teaching appeared acquired a greater special meaning and passing from generation to generation these names even reached to your contemporary favourites to these names they have up till now continued to attribute all kinds of fantastic roles which according to their imagination must be present in those corpse of being devils which have which have been as it were especially organised by our creator himself and sent to their planet to mock them in short to the imagination of these three-brained freaks of our megalocosmos a devil is that invisible somebody existing as it were among them who on the command of our creator or maintainer dwells on their planet for certain of his or maintainer's aims these devils as it were suggest by every truth and falsehood to men beings and compel them to manifest at every step those innumerable villainies which have already become as it were a property of their essence of course none of them even suspects that if every kind of villainy proceeds among them in general then they do these villainies exclusively only because existing wrongly they thus permit to be formed in them their inner evil god which i once called self-calming and which has absolute dominion over the whole of their psyche and for which only this idea of external good and evil is necessary at all events from this fantastic idea of theirs very great publicity was obtained there for the praising and glorifying of the name of our incomparable lucifer because nowhere in the universe are his capabilities so praised and glorified as they are praised and glorified by these favourites of yours at this point of beelzebub's tales there entered that part of the cosmic ship karnak where the conversations took place one of the servants of the ship who gave beelzebub a newly received late to, late to chambos addressed to him and on leaving he turned to everybody and joyfully exclaimed that the reflections of the sphere of the planet caratus could already be seen end of chapter